So what we have here is uh, our vector field geometry uh, as demonstrated by Robert Woodbury in his uh, examination of parametric patterns, but uh, this time done in Revit, and I'm just going to show you a little bit of how it works. So I've got a target point here, and I have a bunch of lines that are all set out. I think there's about 100 lines here. And they're all oriented so that uh, they are perpendicular to this point. You can see how that works as you drag around this family into this field of lines. And it's going to have to go through and do a little bit of calculation for each one of these points and regenerate. But you can see that all these points reorient towards this point after you put it into the um, area where they are. And it takes a little while, but they move around. And you can move your point around and all of your all your lines sort of magnetically attract to them. Now the actual family that's involved in this is dead simple and I'll show you what that is in a second. So let's see we've got everything sort of re reorienting. So it's this one adaptive component here and if I open it up for edit we can take a look at it. Dead simple. It's two points adaptive point one, adaptive point two and a line and the way to make this is you go to your reference, make sure 3D snapping is turned on, drop down two points, I'm going to select those two points, I'm going to make them adaptive, and I'm going to draw a line. And I'm going to draw a line on, it's kind of hard to see, but it's basically it's going to be the end point of this line. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to get my model line, I'm going to turn off 3D snapping, and I'm going to set the work plane to be, that one would probably work, but there's, there's probably a couple of choices here, but I'm going to take that one right there that's perpendicular to my line, and I'm just going to draw a line. Let's call it five feet. And that's it. Flex this in the family. It's like falling off a log, it's so easy. Just flex it like that. You can see it moving around. And then this gets loaded back into the project. So in the project what happens is I can just actually make a new one here and show you how it's made from scratch. New family, mass, and I'm going to give myself sort of an anchor line to line everything up on. And let's make it 80 feet. And I'm going to go back into my family here. And I'm going to load it into my new project. You see I've got it here on my tooltip. I can just start placing it. You can see that's a family right there. And if I tab into just selecting that, move it around, we can see let me zoom in on this. Just one instance here, you can see how it pivots around this one spot, keeps oriented to that point. Very simple. Everything starts to slow down, of course, when you get lots of geometry, but so the way you can place this is, you see it's over here under generic model adaptive component vector field. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop actually a point into this space first because it's going to make it a little easier to select this later on. And I go point 0.1 and point, let's just put it right there on the end, point 0.2. Now I can make a whole bunch of these uh, on this line, although first I'll just show you that it's still moving around. Oh, one other point to show you. Um, well, no, nothing else to show. So I've got this one point here. If I just select point two and I hold down control and drag, I can drag a bunch of copies of this guy like this. And this is, you know, poor man's array. Um, I'm going to make sure that all these guys are the same distance. I've got my dimension tool and I'm just dimensioning to the point number two on each one of those guys like that. And I'm just going to drag this guy right out to the end. If I select on number two, I can actually see over in its properties that it is 
0.9 it's basically 90 percent of the way across the line i'm going to put it all the way to the end i'm going to select my dimensions i'm going to hit eq everything's going to be equal then i don't really need this anymore so i'm going to delete it and now if i go back to level one just it's a little easier to see i can box select those guys and i'm going to shift select these lines because i don't want them selected and I can go in and now I can control copy these guys but leave point one where it is so if I go copy multiple I can just start going one two three four five six let's just do that and again if I want to straighten my guys out it looks like I got this one out of wasn't quite lined up with the rest so I'll just drag him up and I can do the same thing with my line with my dimension tool and you know this is the tedious part about this particular way of working when you've got a lot of instances of something I might have dimensioned to the wrong thing let's see if that works yep whoops nope I dimensioned to something wrong I'll do that again. Reference line, reference line, reference line, all the way across. And equal, thinks about it for a second, it's got a lot of geometry all hosted up here. I seem to have put something in here a little strange, but I'm not going to worry about that. I can actually get rid of this too because I don't need it anymore. So I've got my array of points on lines. Yeah, I put like another reference line in there. Who cares? Uh, if I just select this guy, now I can move it around and everybody points to it. Let's put it there. Chug, 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 chug. Reorient. There we go. And basically I can just turn off the visibility of certain things that I don't want to see in here. So I'll just turn off all that stuff. So now I just have my target and my vector lines. And they reorient. And that's all there is to it. It's really fun to play with this one.